I previously had a question regarding the Genesis 1588 and its stability in less than ideal climates. I have done two hatches so far between December and January just to get an idea of how far we can kind of push the limits of this machine. We are an off-grid property. It's now middle of January. We're just starting to get into below freezing temperatures. We rely strictly on wood heat um, to keep our place warm. So when we go to bed at night, of course it's also the coldest part of the day, our fire winds down and uh, it does get a lot cooler in here than it does during the day. We are technically a rainforest here on Vancouver Island, so really high humidity levels. But then again, we also have the wood heat that dries it out in here. And if you see here, this fan uh, blows heat directly from our wood stove into our living quarters. So lots of dry uh, moving air that comes in over top of this egg incubator. But then again at night, this winds down. Uh, high humidity levels naturally in our environment. So we have quite a bit of flux in heat and humidity. Uh, throughout this incubation process. I do find because our place is probably a lot cooler than a lot of people keep their in-town stick-built homes. So what I've done to help increase the stability of the environment for the egg incubator is I've just taken a part of a wool blanket and wrapped around making sure that I keep the air intake um, not covered because this will this is a uh, moving air incubator so it draws air from the environment and heats it up and distributes it throughout the incubator so you don't want to cover that it does have other vent holes in the bottom for air circulation uh, those are not covered the blanket is just kind of draped over top it's not tucked underneath whatsoever I find by doing this, the heater is not running as often because prior, before doing this, the heater, the heating element would turn on, heat up to the set point, and then it would turn off and within a second it would turn back on because it's so cool in here uh, that it wasn't able to keep up. By doing this, I'm giving some more insulation to the incubator and a little bit of a break to the heating element uh, inside this uh, particular model. We've been very happy with it. I have about well, 34 eggs in there right now. Five of the, or no, sorry, nine of them have uh, started to peep already. And I will update you on the successfulness of this particular hatch. The one that I did prior I had about a 92% hatch rate on on the eggs that made it. I did have to take quite a few out due to fertilization issues and to bacteria um, involvement within the egg. This particular batch we got from a, another farm that we uh, kind of partner with and the fertilization rate was much better. Did take a couple out because of bacteria, but um, other than that, it's been fairly successful and we'll see how many little fuzzy butts we get. An update on this last hatch. The hatch rate was 95%. The hatch prior to that was 92%. So even in ideal environmental conditions, both of those numbers are I think are great numbers for an incubator, let alone the smaller tabletop incubators, where it has more room for error since you have to manually add the water and monitor that constantly. You can add too much, too little. Uh, as far as the humidity, it do, it's a little bit uh, less stable with the tabletop ones versus the large incubators. So yeah. I think 
putting it through its paces in a winter off-grid situation, it has done fantastic. Those are the same numbers that we were getting when we were living in town in a stick-built house on shore power. So, just using common sense, giving it that little bit of extra help by putting the wool blanket on it, I think has made a big difference. I don't want to run the experiment again and not put that blanket on there. I think that's just like point poking dogs with sticks, just never a good idea. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope this has been helpful and has made the decision on which incubator that you want to go with a little bit easier. See you next time.